morning guys laura here from hedgehogs homestead i just thought i'd show you uh we had another three inches of rain over the last 24 hours and that made some of my bobs swell on my onions and made them their their necks get soft um like so the necks get soft like that and so um that's when you know that they're done and because we're having so much rain and we have so much rain in the forecast, I'm pulling them up and putting them on a table. Um, I wish I had something with like hardware cloth or something on it that I could put them on so that they would breathe better. But um, this is on my porch, my front porch, and we are getting a lot of um, air that flows through here. So I'm not worried about it too much. Next year, I hope to have something in place so that I have a, a multi-drying rack or something that would take up less space than right now we have three tables. Um, so um, I might have to put another one behind me in this space once these onions all start coming up because I have three beds of uh, four, three beds that are an eight by four size of onions this year. So, um, that's what we're looking at and i'll show you what we've pulled out of the garden so far okay and i'll look up the what variety this is um my husband thought these were the walla wallas because walla wallas usually grow to that size my walla wallas are just starting to bulb up now but i got them like three or four weeks after these so um these are looking fantastic my reds are average size um one's a little bit weird but um, I do have some big reds out there. Um, these are the smaller ones. Their necks have bent over them because of the rain, all of the rain we've had. Um, it's, it's been crazy, crazy, crazy. Now this is my garlic and they basically got a little less of the feeding regiment than the onions. They got probably five or six um, feedings, but garlic grows over a longer period of time. Um, and they are looking fantastic too this year. If it wasn't for all the rain, I think, um, I wouldn't have fantastic garlic either. So, um, but that's my garlic and this is my garlic. So we're just white, ready, waiting for them to dry. The hard necks weren't as big as the soft necks. Um, maybe this is a hard neck too. Um, but once, um, the soft necks are like, this is a hard neck and look how small that is, but we're in the South. So I know that hard necks don't do as well. We only have one variety of hard neck, um, that we grew. So I'm waiting for these to be totally, um, all dried up like this. And I want those soft necks to bend on these. So once the soft necks bend on these when I pick them up, then I'll know that they're dry enough to clean off. Um, you can cut off the roots um, before you put them up here. You would have less of a mess, but that's okay. I'll, I'll cut these off when, when they're all dry and we'll clean them up and everything will go in the compost that we cut off of here. We will braid probably the soft necks. I gotta talk to my sister-in-law about it because she bought the seed and I grew it. Um, so it was a collaboration between the both of us. I think she did a fantastic job um, picking out what seed would grow here in Tennessee. She has more experience growing in Tennessee. So um, it's nice that we can collaborate and um, learn. I can learn from her. Um, she's been living here for about 20 years or so. So I've only been here two and a half. So anyway, so we will... Um, braid the sorry rabbit trail we will braid the ones that uh are our soft necks and we'll just maybe uh can in a uh, olive oil solution the ones that are um our hard necks so i'll talk to her about that and we'll get back to you guys so so guys the ideal method for actually drying these would be putting them on some like hardware cloth or chicken wire on a table kind of like this and maybe stacking them up where they could get lots of airflow from the bottom and the top. Hopefully next year we'll have a system like that. Right now, right now 
we only have the tabletops. Um, we just didn't get the time to to make that system. Now I know that, I mean, I've never grown that great of onions before. Now that I know the trick and the method that I need to move forward with, um, and on my garlic as well, is that um, I will be making something for them so that they can dry, get airflow all the way around them. So what you wanna watch for is when you have them drying, make sure that you have lots of airflow. Um, maybe the sunlight can hit them so they dry really well. And, um, but you wanna keep them out of the rain. You don't want them getting wet. Um, so um, this, is, this is the results you want. And you want to watch for mold. Um, you can see that there's something like that here. You want them to dry all the way, just like the garlic here. This is garlic. We want the the greens to dry all the way, and then you cut it off um, because you want it to dry all the way to the stem. You don't want that turning green. Um, mm. But um, another thing is, if your onion has grown. Um, a head on it where I had cut a, a head meaning like a shoot that would produce seeds or flower you want to either pull them out of the garden right away so guys if you have an onion that is starting to produce a flower I have a video for that I can link that here um, you want to either pull that right away or uh, take off the shoot. Um, my preferred method that is I will use going forward is that I, I take that off completely and just I pull it out of the ground. Um, because um, what happens if you leave it in the ground? Um, and I'll show a picture of what that looks like here if it's going to flower or whatever. It can um, make it really woody in the onion and then like half of your onion is wasted so it it still gets a little like really thick through the middle of your onion but you can still eat it if you leave it in the ground that gets really woody and you can't really eat it so we go ahead and we pick it um that's our preferred method but you can leave it in the ground if you're not ready to harvest it but know when you when you take it out of the ground like i have one out here that I'm drying, I actually need to look for it because I need to actually take it in the side, inside, cut it up because it will not uh, store. That's the thing. So if you have any any onions that have produced that seed head, it won't store for you. Um, the other ones that we're gonna let dry here um, will store for a long period of time. Um, your red, your white onions store the longest, your sweet onions store the shortest. So just know that, that's why we grew some of the red and the whites. So white onions, the longest, red is kind of next, and but as soon as you get to the sweet onions, those are gonna be your, your uh, shortest storing onions. And you can, when you go to buy onion starts, um, Dixondale Farms has a really good, um, I didn't buy from Dixondale Farms, but I do recommend them if you can afford them, and that's why I didn't buy from them. Um, not really in the budget. Um, but you can look on their website and they have great guides and suggestions about what kind of onion will grow good in your area. They also have great suggestions about, um, so um, you can put in your, I think zip code or area or you know what zone you are and it will tell you what onions will grow good in your area on Dixondale Farms. So um, I could probably leave a link below in the in the comments or in the more area. So um, I'll try to remember to do that. Um, so that though not only you really want to grow those onions that are, are good for your area, Walla Wallas are on the crust for us and we have those out there. And those are the ones that are struggling the most. They are also in the hardest soil. So next year, if I get Walla Walla onions, I will make sure that soil is nice and fluffy, just like the others. I put them in a brand new bed that had most most of our topsoil, which is clay. 
and it's not very fluffy at all. So it didn't have a, have a lot of organic matter in there to really break up the make this the soil nice and fluffy. So we'll do that next year just to kind of test it out. But right now those those onions are in really hard pan soil. So I'm praying and I'm hoping that they'll bulb up. It looks like some of them are going for it. So they have really nice greens and beautiful greens and I am blocking. <laughs> I'm standing right above a, a, a feeder. So if you guys have heard like little flutterings of a bird, it sounds like a little helicopter going by. I'm standing in front of the feeder that looks empty and I need to make some more um, hummingbird feeder. Our hummingbirds see these up here and they love our food that we plant for them. But anyways, sorry, sorry. Um, anyways, so go to Dixondale Farms. If you can't afford to buy from them, which I've heard nothing but great things from people that do buy from them and people that I trust. Um, use their guides to buy the right onions for your area. And that's going to give you good success. Um, nitrogen food. I'll leave a couple um, suggestions for that below. Um, our compost tea that you know is really high in nitrogen. Our compost tea has a lot of duck manure in it, so I know it's really high in nitrogen. Otherwise, it wouldn't produce the greens. You're looking for really thick greens. Um, and the really thick greens and a, a really t uh, big um, neck is what's going to give you uh, the big bulbs. Plus, well, it's one of the things. So if you get to that point, and then during during the bulbing section, where they start to bulb, water every day at least an inch or more, at least an inch, and you will get bigger bulbs. So, so thank you for coming out today. I know this is a short video. I just needed to show you what was going on and that I had to take out another table. It's been a fantastic year of growing with you, and I was very excited about it, and I thank you for coming along with me this year. God bless you, and we'll see you next time here on Hedgehog's Homestead. Bye.